Hey, I'm Mandy from Deep Lizard. In this episode, we'll demonstrate how we can use TensorFlow's Keras API to create a validation set on the fly during training. Before we demonstrate how to build a validation set using Keras, let's first talk about what exactly a validation set is. So whenever we train a model, our hope is that when we train it, that we see good results from the training output, that we have low loss and high accuracy. But we don't ever train a model just for the sake of training it. We want to take that model and hopefully be able to use it in some way on data that it wasn't necessarily exposed to during the training process. And although this new data is data that the model has never seen before, the hope is that the model will be good enough to be able to generalize well on this new data and give accurate predictions for it. We can actually get an understanding of how well our model is generalizing by introducing a validation set during the training process. To create a validation set, before training begins, we can choose to take a subset of the training set and then separate it into a separate set labeled as validation data. And then during the training process, the model will only train on the training data and then will validate on the separated validation data. So what do we mean by validating? Well, essentially, if we have the addition of a validation set, then during training, the model will be learning the features of the training set, just as we've already seen. But in addition, in each epoch, after the model has gone through the actual training process, it'll take what it's learned from the training data and then validate by predicting on the data in the validation set, using only what it's learned from the training data, though. So then during the training process, when we look at the output of the accuracy and loss, not only will we be seeing the accuracy and loss computed for the training set, we'll also see that computed on the validation set. It's important to understand, though, that the model is only learning on or training on the training data. It's not uh, taking the validation set into account during training. The validation set is just for us to be able to see how well the model is able to predict on data that it was not exposed to during the training process. In other words, it allows us to see how general our model is, how well it's able to generalize on data that is not included in the training data. So knowing this information will allow us to see if our model is running into the famous overfitting problem. So overfitting occurs when the model has learned the specific features of the training set really well, but it's unable to generalize on data it hasn't seen before. So if while training, we see that the model is giving really good results for the training set, but less than good results for the validation set, then we can conclude that we have an overfitting problem and then take the steps necessary to combat that specific issue. If you'd like to see the overfitting problem covered in more detail, then there is an episode for that in the Deep Learning Fundamentals course. All right, so now let's discuss how we can create and use a validation set with a Keras sequential model. There's actually two ways that we can create and work with validation sets with a sequential model. And the first way is to have a completely separate validation set from the training set, and then to pass that validation set to the model in the fit function, there is a validation data parameter. And so we can just set that equal to the structure that is holding our validation data. And there's a write-up in the corresponding blog for this episode that contains more details about the format that that data needs to be in. But we're going to actually only focus on the second way of creating and using a validation set. This step actually saves us a step because we don't have to explicitly go through the creation process of the validation set. Instead, we can get Keras to create it for us. All right, so we're back in our Jupyter Notebook right where we left off last time. And we're here on the model.fit function. And recall, this is what we used last time to train our model. Now, I've already edited this cell to include this new parameter, which is validation split. And what validation split does is it does what it sounds like. It splits out a portion of the training set into a validation set. So we just set this to a number between zero and one, so just a fractional number, to tell Keras how much of the training set we need to split out into the validation set. So here I'm splitting out 10% of the training set. 
So it's important to note that whenever we do this, the validation set is completely held out of the training set. So the training samples that we remove from the training set into validation set are no longer contained within the training data any longer. So using this approach, the validation set will be created on the fly whenever we call the fit function. Now there's one other thing worth mentioning here. And remember last time I discussed this shuffle equals true parameter. And I said that by default, the training set is shuffled whenever we call fit. So this shuffle equals true is already set by default. But I was just bringing it up to let you know that, uh, that the training set is being shuffled. So that is uh, a good thing. We want the training set to be shuffled. But whenever we call validation split in this way, this split occurs before the training set is shuffled. Meaning that if we created our training set and say um, we put all of the sick patients first and then the non-sick patients second. And then we say that we want to split off the last 10% of the training data to be our validation data, it's going to take the last 10% of the training data. And therefore, it could just take all of the, the second group that we put in the training set and not get any of the first group. So I wanted to mention that because although the training data is being shuffled with the fit function, if you haven't already shuffled your training data before you pass it to fit, then you also use the validation split parameter it's important to know that your validation set is going to be the last X percent of your training set and therefore may not be shuffled and may yield some strange results because you think that everything has been shuffled when really it's only the training set has been shuffled after the validation set has been taken out. So just keep that in mind. The way that we created our training set uh, before this episode, we actually shuffled the training data before it's ever passed to the fit function. So in the future, whenever you're working with data, it's a good idea to make sure that your data is also shuffled beforehand, especially if you're going to be making use of the validation split parameter to create a validation set. All right, so now we'll run this cell one more time calling the fit function, but this time not only will we see loss and accuracy metrics for the training set, we'll also see these metrics for the validation set. All right, so the model has just finished running its 30 epochs, and now we see both the loss and accuracy on the left-hand side, as well as the validation loss and validation accuracy on the right-hand side. So we can see, let's just look at the accuracy between the two. Uh, they're both starting at around the same 50% mark and going up gradually around the same rate. So if we just scroll all the way to our last epoch, we can see that the accuracy and validation accuracy are pretty similar with only 1% difference between the two. And yeah, the loss values are similar as well. So we can see in this example that our model is not overfitting. It is actually performing pretty well, or just as well rather, on the validation set as it is on the training set. So our model is generalizing well. If however, we saw that the opposite case was true and our validation accuracy was seriously lagging behind our training accuracy, then we know that we have an overfitting problem and we would need to take steps to address that issue. All right, so we have now seen how to train the model, how to validate the model, and how to make use of both training and validation sets. In the next episode, we're going to see how to make use of a third data set, the test data set, to use the model for inference. By the way, we are currently in Vietnam filming this episode. If you didn't know, we also have a vlog channel where we document our travels and share a little bit more about ourselves. So check that out at the Blizzard Vlog on YouTube. Also, be sure to check out the corresponding blog for this episode, along with other resources available on deeplizzard.com. And check out the Deep Blizzard Hive Mind, where you can gain exclusive access to perks and rewards. Thanks for contributing to Collective Intelligence. I'll see you next time.